Hello, Clemic Review family. Hello, Clemic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clemic Reviews. We are the best NCLEX review business in the world, in my opinion. And you can go to clemicreviews.com to check out our reviews. So today is the ninth of our farm videos. There's 10 in total. And if you haven't watched the others, that's okay. You can watch this one. You don't have to watch in any particular order, but I do suggest watching them all. There's some good information in all of them. I am covering the 50 essential meds you need to know for NCLEX. So let's go ahead and get started. You're caring for a 63-year-old female, which of the following medications may be prescribed for her? All right, how do you interpret this question? You say, 63-year-old female, that's all I know. So you have to say, what would a 63-year-old possibly suffer from, okay? So resedronate, estradiol, donepezil, memantine. All right, I gave you the trade name here to help you out a little bit. Now, Aricet, I know is for Alzheimer's, and I'm not going to, that seems a little extreme to assume a 63-year-old is going to need Aricet. Namenda, memantine. Memantine or Namenda is also for Alzheimer's. So I am not willing to assume that just because she's 63, she has Alzheimer's. I'm looking for something more common for someone who's 63. So I'm going to cross off three and four. So resedronate is actually for osteoporosis and estradiol is for low estrogen levels. Now I know that as a 63 year old, she's gone through, I'm sure she's gone through menopause. And so estradiol could maybe be it, but I know most breast cancers are estrogen dependent and we just don't prescribe estradiol anymore. We don't give it because so many breast cancers are estrogen dependent. But I do know at age 63, it's very likely because of her low estrogen levels that she's got osteoporosis. So my best guess for someone who's 63 is resedronate or actinel. Now, this is one of those questions that you go, this is awfully vague. Really? They're going to ask me this question? They could. You you guys, that y'all, sorry, y'all, they are very vague on the NCLEX. You have to be prepared to think. This is not the kind of question you would have memorized or the answer you would have memorized. You have to say, okay, what makes most sense for a 63-year-old? Uh, and either something for menopause or something for osteoporosis are the two that I would be most concerned about. And I know estradiol is contraindicated because so many breast cancers are estrogen dependent. 42, the client is scheduled to receive 20 units of Novolog insulin. When is the best time to administer this med medication? So Novolog is Lispro or Aspart. It's rapid acting. If you don't know this, Novolog has a 15 minute onset and a 30 minute peak. Okay. 15 minute onset and 30 minute peak, which means I give it with the meal, not before the meal, not before the meal. Cause if I give it 30 minutes before it's going to peak before they even take their first bite. So I need to interrupt the meal to give it and don't say, but that seems so rude. That seems so rude to interrupt the meal. It's not, that's what we do. I walk in the room and I say, do you mind if I interrupt for just a minute? I need to give you your insulin. That's what I say. I say, can I interrupt you? I try to be polite about it. Um, three at the scheduled time. It does not need to be scheduled around the meal. That's false. 30 minutes before the meal, absolutely false. 30 minutes after the meal. I mean, I guess you could, but that's not ideal. Interrupt the meal to give it is when you want to give it. 43, your client is scheduled to receive Glargine, 25 units of insulin this morning. What is the best time to administer this medication? Now, Glargine. It helps you kind of underline the L-A-R-G and E in glargine. So just underline L-A-R-G and the E, and it's large. So remember that's it's called long acting, but there's it, and it can last up to 24 hours, between 12 and 24 hours. But the interesting thing about glargine is there is no peak, y'all. There is no peak, which means you're not worried. Theoretically, you're not worried about hypoglycemia. So you don't have to schedule it around a meal. You don't have to. So the right answer here is you give it when it's scheduled. It does not need to be scheduled around a meal because there's no peak. And I did underline the large there for you. 
All right, your supervising a student nurse will be giving the anoxaparin injection this morning. If you can't really see that, I'll make it a little bigger for you. I don't know if you can tell. This is before it's been opened and there's a little bubble there kind of at the top. Um, so that's kind of what that looks like. Which of the following statements indicates the student nurse knows how to administer this injection? Okay, one, I will give it in the abdomen. True, you always give it in the abdomen. Lovenox, always in the, in the abdomen. I will give it in the deltoid, false. I will get rid of all the air in the syringe before I give it. False. The air goes in last. You do not get rid of the air in a Lovenox injection. It goes in last. It helps hold the medication. And I'll push it in very slowly so I don't make them bleed. Um, I mean, you can push it in slowly. We usually push it in moderately fast. Maybe not as fast as you can, but moderately fast. But that's not the key thing. Remember, if you do four, you're not going to do one. And I have to do one. I have to do one. I have to give it in the abdomen. It always goes in the abdomen and you never push the air out. Those are the two things you need to know about Lovenox. All right, last question. For which client is sildenafil contraindicated? Contraindicated. So they should not take sildenafil. All right, if you don't know, sildenafil is Viagra. Okay, we never call it sildenafil. We always call it Viagra. So make sure you know this one. Because if you know it's Viagra, then you're going to have a lot easier time answering this question, okay? Sildenafil is Viagra. 65-year-old patient with a history of BPH. That doesn't contraindicate Viagra. A 72-year-old client whose spouse died five years ago. That doesn't contraindicate Viagra. A 40-year-old with a history of MI. That definitely contraindicates Viagra. A 50-year-old client who has a 20-pack year history of smoking. I mean, I'd rather they not smoke, but that's not an absolute contraindication for Viagra. It's not an absolute contraindication. Um, so the absolute contraindication is someone who had an MI because it um, increases their risk for a coronary event if they have a history of coronary artery disease or have a history of stroke or heart, heart disease. History of stroke or heart disease is a contraindication for Viagra or sildenafil. All right. That's it. That's the end of this one. It was the ninth video. There is only one more left. I hope you look forward to that one. Check us out at clinicreviews.com. See if we have an online or in-person review coming up. Um, I hope you enjoy these videos and I will see you soon.